pie. What do you think of all this? A bit sad, really. Do you think so? I reckon it's all right. Promenade. Looks like a bit of a laugh. Yeah, well, I suppose it is, really. Look like they're having fun, anyway. A bit of a laugh, right. I haven't seen you before. Are you from round here? Yeah, the village. You? Oh, but Robles Field way. Do you? Do you? Oh, I will if you will. I prefer something a bit slower. You know, more smoochy like. Yeah, me too. We could do our own thing. Dance to our own beat. Yeah, I bet we could too. <laughs> So step it out and step it in to the merry music of the violin. We'll dance the hours of the You're a bit off your territory, aren't you, Butch? I thought this dance would open to all members of the community. Please try to remember today is a special one. A lot of people here lost loved ones a year ago. We all have. Except our kids' death weren't an accident, then. Now knock it off, all of you, I'll get out of that door. You included, Biff. But we've got no argument with you, Ned. Rather you start somewhere, lad. So think on. Now, it's time for a lady's excuse me waltz. Come on, girls. Don't be shy. Well, I think we diffused a major incident there. I feel like he went peacekeeper. It's going to be about as much use as one in a minute. See that bird that looks chatting up over there? No, she is. No, who is she? Tina Dingle. Butch's sister. Oh, brilliant. What are you doing? Dancing now, shut up! No, you're not! Not with your brother's murderer, you're not! You! You're Luke McAllister! Stop it now! You murderers! Stop! Take your hands off me, you old cow! You'll be sorry! All of you! Come on! Oh, Mrs McAllister, can I have a word? There's a pastoral matter we need to discuss. Now? Well, it's pretty urgent. Uh, let's go to my office, shall we? Will this take long? As long as it takes. At least it's not about a member of your family. There's no reason why it should be. Uh, We've got a new pupil from Overly Comprehensive. Now, the fact is, she was too much for them to handle and they asked her to leave. She sounds a bit of a problem. Yes, well, uh, the local authority think we can handle it. I see. She's bright but disruptive. Uh, terrible home background. But I'm sure somebody of your experience can do something for her. It's a bad time of year to be bringing somebody new into the group. Yes, well, knees must, I'm afraid. I'll do my best. Tina, this is Mrs. McAllister. Meet your new pupil, Tina Dingle. Come in, Tina, and close the door. You can sit down if you like. I won't bother. I won't be staying long, will I? I didn't choose this any more than you did. And I'd like to think we could keep our private lives separate from school. From what the head was saying, it seems your GCSE grades were well above average. I'm not thick, you know. I'm glad to hear it. It would be a shame to waste a good brain. Up to me, ain't it? You're here, so I presume that means you want to learn. You can be sure I will do my very best to help you. You! Look, Tina, I know that outside school there are difficulties between us. But in here, you're a pupil and I'm a teacher, and I'd like to think we could keep it on that level. Oh, I bet you would. If we can't, it won't be through any lack of trying on my part. I've been doing this job for a good many years, and I think I know how to do it. Do you? I want you to do well here, and I want to help you. As far as I'm concerned, any differences between us will be outside school. And I'd like to think it's the same for you. Yes, miss. Yeah, that's right. I were expelled. Assaulting a member of staff. It were a crap place, anyway. So what do you come here for? Oh, they don't get rid of me that easy. Well, look who it is. 
Hello, Tina. Hello, Tina. Who do you think you are talking to me? Look, I'm on my way home. Oh, to your murdering brother. It's true. Your brother killed my brother. Look, he didn't do anything, so just leave me alone. Right? The Dingles, don't forget that sort of thing. Your brother's not going to get away with it. Look, just leave me alone. What's going on here? Leave her alone. Who says? I will not have bullying at this school. Won't you? Oh, that hurts. No, don't you dare. Get off me. You leave Jess alone. Don't touch me. Mr. McAllister, what's going on here? Nothing I can't handle. Tina? Jessica bumped into me, sir. Yeah, it was an accident. It's all under control. So long as it is? Of course. And you? Of course. Of course. Oh, no, somebody help me. It's Anne Grenade's daughter. It's Anne Harrod, but to you it's Mrs McAllister. No. They call her Anne Grenade, see? Cos she explodes before you can count to ten. Rip me best dress she did. Now you know where Luke but don't touch gets it from. Uh, you mad and all, eh? Hey, leave her alone. Why? You gonna whip me? Kill her. But leave it, Luke. She's mental. You wanna keep that pretty face of yours on the front of your head? You'll keep your gob shut. Oh, come on, Jess. It's no good talking to her. So don't try. What happened to your brother was an accident. I know that's what your fancy solicitor said. Must be nice to buy your way off a murder charge. It wasn't like that. You hit him, you killed him. If you come near me again, my brothers, the ones that are left, that is, will make what that woman in America did to her husband look like cosmetic surgery. You did right to tell me, lass. Right to me, Dad. They think just because they've got money, they're better than us. Well, this is the right place to teach her a lesson. Right, missus. This time it bloody stops. What's going on? That cow and her murdering son, that's what's going on. And it's about time you did something about it. Should have seen the marks on our Tina's back. I was going to call the police, me, but Lass wouldn't have it. Frightened she'd get picked on at school if she did. I can assure you, Mr Dingle, there'll be no victimisation of anyone here. You can assure all you like, but those kids of hers were picking on Tina this morning. Poor lass is petrified. Oh, for goodness sake, Headmaster, anyone would think Mr Dingle's family were little angels. No, lady. Just one of them. I shall, of course, be speaking to Mrs McAllister's children myself, Mr Dingle, to make sure they understand the seriousness of the position. It's not the kids that bother me, mister, it's her. She hasn't denied attacking my daughter and she shouldn't be allowed near anyone else's kids. Of course I deny attacking your daughter. It was well, she... Well, how does she explain this, then? She tore that from our Tina's back and in front of everyone. I want something done about her and I want it doing now. And if you won't do it, I'll find someone who will. Come on, sweetheart. Dolores. What? We need to talk. I'm lost. We can sort all this out, you know. As far as I'm concerned, it's sorted. Well, at least hear me out. Oh, I wouldn't want to make you late for class. I mean, you've got your exams to think about, haven't you? Well, we can meet up after school. Take a ride and talk and have a drink or something. Haven't you got the message yet? Funny how no one seems to want to go out with a murderer, isn't it? It's not like that, Tina. Your parents may be able to buy a verdict for you, but that don't change now. At least let me explain my side of it. Derek and Camilla will be responsible for meeting parents as they arrive and for directing anyone who isn't familiar with the school geography. OK? Thank you. Sorry I'm late, Mrs McAllister. That's all right, Tina. I've learned to expect it. But as you weren't here 20 minutes ago, I'm afraid we've sorted out Thursday evening now. Why ain't my name on here? It was. But when you didn't turn up, I thought you'd lost interest. Well, I'm here now, so you better change it back. There's no need for that. If you do manage to get here on Thursday, you can help where needed. That ain't good enough, see. I can do a better job than any of those dweebs. And if you want to know why I were late, I were running an errand for the headmaster. So if you've got a problem about it, you better take it up with him. And if you start victimising me again, my dad will be straight round here to complain. Now, 
Let's get this sorted out properly, shall we? I'm going to have the teachers grouped in disciplines. So we have sciences, arts, social and moral studies. Wouldn't it be better for parents if members of staff could be located alphabetically? And physical education in the annex. I'm sure it would be easier if We shouldn't underestimate our mums and dads, Mrs McAllister. Besides, we'll have our army of volunteers to provide assistance. At least Tina Dingle. That's my point, really. She's positively blooming with the added responsibility I've given her. We shouldn't underestimate our pupils either, Mrs McAllister. I don't... I'll write the name cards up, shall I? No need. Delegate it. Tina, uh, and Jane, and Michael, please. I've got a little job for you. Could you tell me where Mrs Robinson is, please? Yes, sure. She's over there in that corner. Oh. First parents night I've been to this, which is one more than me mum and dad. Yeah, they're a bit of a bore. That's what our butch says. Bit of a bore. Still is as thick as two short planks, though, isn't it? <laughs> it's dead nice, everyone chatting, discussing the plans. You, uh, you all right, Jess? Yes, fine, thanks. Lord Dr McAllister. Luke and Jess getting good reports, are they? Uh, yes, splendid. <laughs> it's all going very well. Get the procedures right and the pupils will be right. A well-oiled machine. And here is the oil for the machine. <laughs> no sugar in yours, Mrs McAllister. Jess said you didn't take it. Oh, thank you. Can I fetch some biscuits? Not now, Tina. Minx, Tina Dingle, has got the head wrapped round her little finger. I think she'd been accepted at Oxbridge. Well, she was certainly very pleasant earlier. You don't know her. No, well, she's being nice to Jess, which is the most important. She's trying to make me look a fool. Uh, perhaps she's just trying to live down being a Dingle. And what's more, the head's falling for it. Yeah, well, I'm certain everything will be fine. It'll be fine. He's nice, your dad. Yeah, he's okay. He fancies me. What? He'd love to get his mitts on me. What did you mean before? What? That your dad's been eyeing me up? Look, cut it out. Where is he, by the way? My point is this. Who fears league tables when you're top of the league? <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't you agree, Mrs McAllister? Yes, absolutely. So, uh, what are your views? Well, how does one measure performance? What criteria should one... You shouldn't do that! You shouldn't touch me there! Excuse me. What's the matter? He did a dirty thing to me, sir, and he said things. Of course I didn't do anything. I'll deal with this. I saw everything. She's on his side, sir. She hates me. You know, you can trust me, Tina. <laughs> I can't believe that little hussy. Look, just calm down, Mr McAllister. I want her out of this school now. Well, I think it'd be far better if your husband left. You're taking her side. Look, this is hardly the place. She has made a public accusation. Yes, which we can investigate in due course. Investigate? Can't you see she's a born liar? All I can see is yet another situation where the conduct of you and your family threatens the good name of my school. And you better leave too. This is hardly appropriate behaviour from a deputy head teacher. You sanctimonious hypocrite! <sighs> Come on, Mum. He ought to be put in prison, dirty old get. Just ignore her. Old perv ought to be locked up. I bet he really enjoys examining his patients. So he can touch them up. Look, you shut your stinking lying little mouth or I'll shut it for you. You touch me and I'll kill you. Then stop spreading your stinking lies. They're not lies. He had his hands all over me. What's the matter? Are you jealous? You little cow! Oh, come on, Jess. <laughs> there we go. Cheers, you have no. How are on bar? Hey, hey, you said the Ringles don't have class. Well, I think it looks really tacky. And what do you know about it? I know more about decor than you. I read the oh, magazines. Oh, cut it out. Why in God's name would we need a bar at home when you spend most of your life propping one up in a pub? 
It's a cocktail bar, isn't it? Oh, and what do you know about mixing drinks, Zach? I've seen him doing it. I mean, before he drinks them. Um... Snake bite. That's not a cocktail, you moron. Shut up! It's Brandy Alexandria's and all that stuff. Yeah, and what's in that, then? Huh? Well, it's, uh, uh Brandy and, um... Oh, I don't know. I'll get a book on it. Here, look, come and sit down. Try it out. Makes you look like a real lady, Nell. Aye, well, I suppose it could keep you sucking at home, Mo. Of course it would. And it'd bring the room up to date. Yeah, early medieval cesspit. Yeah. Mm, I suppose it does add a certain something to the uh, decor of the room. And here, Luke. Oh, Zachy! <laughs> oh, you do think about me, don't you? Ah. <laughs> Who wants to see what a good job Dad's made at Wishing Well out front? I've been waiting two years for him to put me a new washing line in the back. I think I can wait a few minutes to see a wishing well. Why don't you have a drink, woman, and get off me back? I'll have a large cream de men. You know we've only got better. Yes, what about? Never mind, you can buy me one on opening night at Woolpack. Are you going? Yes. Hey, I think we should all go, eh? Make your family trip a bit. Dad, you are going to go mad. Why? What's happened? Somebody's dumped this old sort of wishing well right outside our wall. It looks absolutely stupid. <laughs> ah, Mr and Mrs Dingle and, and family. Where's the free ale? We thought we'd come and give you the once over. Well, uh, home from home, no doubt, as I'm sure all the old fittings are probably installed, Shay Dingle. I wouldn't mind some of them. No, 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 no. cheap, cheap imitations. So do go and get your free drink. Yeah. Get us a large ginger. And don't forget your complimentary raffle ticket. What a surprise? Something very special. An holiday in Florida? No, nothing quite so vulgar. It's, it's a meal for the family here. <laughs> Get real. Could you see your way to swap in my ticket for another free drink? All of this. Guess who's left, Emmerdale? Who? All of that stuck up, murdering, molesting bunch of the McAllisters. They've never. Yeah. We won! We sent some packing. I'm proud of the lot of you. <laughs> Don't bring our Ben back, though, does it? No, love. It doesn't. For a moment, please. I, I would like you all to give a warm Emmerdale welcome to our celebrity guest, who has come to declare the new Woolpack officially open. So to declare the Woolpack open. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, it really is Ian Botham. Interna international superstar, television celebrity, fundraiser, raconteur. And don't forget the pantomimes. Oh, oh yes, and star of many a pantomime. Oh, no, he's not. <laughs> Uh, uh, Ian, uh, welcome to the Woolpack. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much, Alan. Ah, so this is what the inside of a pub looks like. <laughs> well, this is the uh, proudest moment of uh, my life since... Well, since last night when I opened another pub. <laughs> <laughs> Where's Bill Beaumont? <laughs> Couldn't get him through the doors. But, uh, I declare this pub open and uh, wish everyone well that drinks in it for many years. Yeah. Oh, it's gorgeous, isn't it? It's all tanned and aren't you? Gorgeous. Perhaps we may ask our celebrity if he would be kind enough to do the draw for our raffle. And I might remind you all that the prize is an evening of gastronomic pampering by yours truly. Mm. <laughs> What's the second prize? Two evenings. <laughs> And the winning number is 89. Hey, that's me! I've won! Yeah! Oh, lovely, yeah, that's right. Hey, you know what this means, don't you? We'll get us dinner and warm plates. Done the lucky win to get a kiss and all. Well, why not? Mm. <laughs> 
like she's getting her free dinner tonight. Oh, <laughs> no one can they call you beef, eh? Mm. So, uh, you're going to be one of my regulars, then? I like something classy, exciting. It's just been done, up. The people are the same, boring. I know. You included. Not when you get to know me, darling. No, thanks. Terry, will you collect some glasses? Isn't it past your bedtime? You need it more than me, love, Terry. Glasses. Right. <clears throat> I'll uh, have that drink you're offering. Right. Oh, I should have left you in Leeds. Oh, you'd be lost without me. Oh, why, it's great being with a bloke who fancies schoolgirls and threatens a bloke in a wheelchair. I didn't threaten him. Just try and act half human while Gerald Taylor's here. You better give him a roasting then. Brit, can you get this young lady a lager and blackcurrant? Certainly, Gerald. Uh, Jailbait. Pardon? She's a schoolgirl. Excuse me. You really shouldn't be drinking, young lady. I'm not. Are you get me that drink then, or what? No. And I love you. Look at her, mate. And how lovely, aren't they? Come on now, folks. Can we have your glasses, please? Eh? Hey, I say, come on. Folks, get our Sam up. Come on, Sam. Sam, get up. Ooh. I say, Mr. Turner, I am half looking forward to this meal, you know. Well, I'm sure you'll appreciate it, Mrs. Yeah. Dingle. Come on. Yeah. I will, but I don't know about this lot. I mean, I've spoiled him, you know. I'm going to do. Yeah, come on, man. Get him out. That's it. Go on, yeah. Cheers, thanks very much. Night. Ta da. I say, next time he comes, oh, he'll have a good lining on his stomach. Ta da. Yeah, Ta da. Ta da. Ta da. This over, is it? Made our fortune? Not exactly. Oh. Hey, that looks nice, that. Do you know I'd finish it off? One of them gnomes with a fishing rod. I know where it's. I want to go into Otten. What for? Well, I've got no decent to wear for this, do I need a new frock? Yeah, OK. Hey, guess what? I'm going to get some of them invitation cards and all I want to do this thing right. Eh? Hey? Well, I've got to invite Adam, am our cousin? And there's more than her brood. I thought we weren't speaking to her. I want to show that stuck-up cow that we've got more class than her any day. But, Mum, we're just one dinner for the five of us. We can't go inviting everyone. The invitation says for all family, it says now about numbers. Wolfpack pack ain't big enough. Well, that's Turner's lookout, not ours. Come on, Zach. <laughs> hey, wait till you see it today, hey, Mum? We've already seen it, Mum. You look wonderful, Mum. <laughs> I'm going to get myself a drink. You know what? I think your dad's a bit jealous. You know, me and me thought to talk with another man. Oh, Dad, you ought to be proud of her. She's famous now. We liked it so much, we put a copy in that old frame of Auntie Ada's. I thought it'd look perfect to have it bar. What do you reckon, Dad? Wow. Look who's here. Oi. Mister, my mum sent me down with a message about the dinner. Here's a list of what we want and what we don't want. Our butch won't touch anything green. There's no need for this, my dear. Everything's all taken care of. A gourmet meal for five. And the rest? Which rest? Well, there's Auntie Maud and her lot. Cousin Adam's mob. They're on the list. Auntie Maud isn't invited. Dinner for all the family, that's what you said. Here, you lot, what does it say here? Slap up meal for all family. Looks like she's got you there. <laughs> There's fair, Mr Turner. Yes, yes, of course. Well, well, do tell your mother I'm looking forward to welcoming you all. Paul, Sam. What? I'm just trying to work out this dinner at the Woolpack. Are you coming? Yeah, I am. Right, that makes 13 then with Maud and Adam's family. And old Bert don't like anything with eggs in, yeah. Kids are having fish fingers and Maud's having scampi and shit. I'm not touching fish. Oh. I don't want any rabbit food. You get scurvy. He already has. <laughs> That's what smell is. Gosh, can't you two leave each other alone? If that's menu for Thursday, I'll have sausage and chips. And beer. Loads of it. That goes without saying. And I'm having spaghetti. You what? It doesn't take a minute to open a tin, does it? Right, come on. Go down to Woolpack with this. I'll go. Oh, no, you won't. You'll come back legless. At least I know how Tina will be back before closing time. I'll have to. I've got no money. Any chance, Dad? 
It's right wishing well. Well, I don't think they take tin cans. Ooh, am I looking forward? Hey, how do I look? Have I seen that before? Only in a shop window in Hotton. For a free meal, this is costing me an heck of a lot of money. Mr Nat Turner don't think we're good enough for his posh restaurant. I'm not going to prove him right. Oh, don't you think you're going out dressed like that, lady? Mum, nobody's going to look at me, not with you in that dress. Oh, do you think so? Oh, thanks, Mum. Mum, so gormless, this is my shirt. You sold it to me. I hired it to you. Ten quid for one night? Yeah. Sam, go and get your bath water. It's getting cold. I'm doing we out. You heard your mother, lad. You've all been in it. There's only enough water for one full bath. He's been cutting his toenails in it. He's left them on the side. Butch, you are gross. Where's the problem if he's left them on the side? There's only nine of them there. Oh, please. Get in that. Hi. Welcome to the wool pack. Come in. Hiya. Hello. Hello. Hi. Well, I knew tonight was going to be memorable, but until now I didn't know why. Now then, mister. I hope you've got a new barrel of ale on and a ruddy big chip on. None of us have eaten today. <laughs> I could take a bite out of this barmaid for starters, though, Dad. Have a drink instead. Better for you. Five pints, uh, port and lemon for the good lady. Whatever else anyone's having, orange juice, how it's in it. Stick a vodka in it, will you? You got it, Prince. Oh, Randy for Becky, big Spain. Could have sworn they'd have been at it by now. All that beer in them. The Turner hasn't offered them a single chip all night. I think we'll have to eat here. It all looks really nice. I'm afraid this is a one-off. Brit's taking over after this. That sounds more like it. Bit of steak and chips. Tell you what, Seth. Punch up by 10.30, double or quits. Go on, man. Can I have another orange juice, please? You make them much nicer than she does. Must be something about her face turns oranges sour. Er, uh, what was that, er, uh, veg? Veg, we're meeting it, Mr Turner. I'll get her an Ellie to knock us some up. That is chou farci, Mr Dingle. That's minced beef and bacon wrapped in cabbage leaves. Cabbage? I, I don't like cabbage. Well, sometimes it pays to be bilingual, Mr Dingle. The little girl wants an orange juice, Terry. All right. Oh, I am sorry. Oh. But still, you'd nearly grown out of it anyway, hadn't you? You did that on purpose. Oh. Hey, Turner, what's for pudding? But it better not be more French muck. Shut your cob, Sammy. You'll wait for us in the van. It is, uh, Framboise au figue, avec sauce anglais. Raspberries with figs and custard. Well, I won't have none of that French muck. I'll just have the raspberries and figs with custard. Let's be having you. Come on, David, you've plenty of kip now, you're a top executive. Yeah, Bob, uh, you're having me on G&T's next. <laughs> well, just look what a lifetime of ale done to your father's stomach. Do you mean it's muscle, that? <laughs> oh, give <laughs> up! <on. laughs> right, Good see you, ta-da. See you later, chaps. That's trouble you're looking at there. Come on. Yeah, yeah, no. No, they've not overcharged us, no. Is that the meter money you've got with you? Here's some of that. I go. So well hey, you're right. Flintstones, are Nice to see you in that one. I'll see you later. All right. Uh, I, I'm afraid yeah, the food's today. off tonight. Oh, well, we've already ate. Right. We had Zach's favourite, chips, salad, eggs, salad beans. No offence, Mr Turner, but, hey, no-one knows where end a frying pan like Karen <laughs> I'm, I'm sure. Well, well, how can I help? Well, we're on our way to our local, as usual, but it's been getting a bit posh for us lately. They've been putting mats out for your glasses. No, I realise we've felt more at home here, among our own kind. We've seen a bit more of us from now on. <laughs> really? No, 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 what, what's it to be? Three pints, two Maria. And a and vodka and orange. Ah, I forget the vodka. Three. OK, man. It's a nice. What's he doing here? He's here for a quiet drink, Zach, same as you lot. We heard you gone back south. Where you belong. Not in here, Zach, love. Exactly. Not in here. Wouldn't like to spoil our new floor. Anybody wants a drink, they behave themselves. Clear? Usual, lads. Please, Terry. 
So I'll sort him, Dad. You shut it and go and sup your pint. We've come in here for a civilised bevy, right? Right! All right, ma'am. Where do you think you're going? Thought we'd seen the last of you round here. Oh, yeah? Soon you're going to wish we had. You feel a bit more like home, eh, love? All depends what your home's like, really, Terry. Be like yours at the moment, Al. That reminds me, how's the house hunting going? Oh, we've got our eye on a couple of things, haven't we, Terry? I love you can say that again. <laughs> you want to bar that lot, Alan, before Terry asks them to move in? That's all big joke. Oh, look, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm late. I won't mind, but it's Smogo, he's murder. Last time he kept... <laughs> Tina. Oh, look, I didn't mean... I, I mean, I wouldn't have thought it. I mean, I hope you don't think that I... Anything. This is nectar. Far too good for this lot. Stick in that plastic bag, we'll have it later. Oh, it tastes like juice drugs to me. Mind you, we can't grip it. Price must be knocked off. <laughs> <laughs> Hope not. I've had enough trouble with the police already. <laughs> hey, that'll be flying, scrub. <laughs> hey, all right, girl. Stop it. Hey, Lou. Hiya. I think you know this WPC. She's in civvies tonight. Very nice. <laughs> Thank you, Lou. I'm not sure if you know my friend, though. Tina. Luke. Well, Luke, you can do some things right. Nice party. Second impression you've made on me today. Of course, I can make it a third if you let me take you home. Oh, and I'm sure my family would make you feel very welcome. No, Luke, it's your party. People would miss you. Another one. It would be no problem. It would be my way of making it up to you. You're knocking over your books, I mean. It's kind of you. You're not the nerd you make out to be. I've got my lift, Luke. Bye, Luke.